Hey everybody and welcome to a truly special Wild Ride with Steve-O. This week we've got a legend, man. There's no other way to put it. A legend of so many things and a personal hero of mine from way back in the day. And dude, we're both van lifers, man. So let's dive into it. Let's not, let's not leave it in the hallway as they I'm, say. Let's, I, uh... I, learned, I learned that saying from you. Okay, here, here's how we do it. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Green. Yeah. All right. All dude. right. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you've met my co host, Scott. Randolph. Yeah, we've met. We've met at the uh, airport. You're like, look, it's TG. Yeah, dude. And I was like, what's up, TG? And up at <laughs> what's the up, man? How are you? Good to see you. Good, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Up at the front of the van, we got the gorgeous Paul Brisky. Hey, Tom, how oh, are you? Wow, that's cool. So you guys are all in the van right now. That's right. That's man. amazing. Van so are you are you uh, in some uh, amazing place right now? I'm 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 not in my van right now. I'm in, I'm in my house, but you've been here to my house before. Oh, this many is not times. the van. Yeah, yeah. many times. <laughs> We're just parked outside of my house, dude. So much of this oh, okay. darn cool, cool, pandemic. Cool. You know, we had such big plans for the van. We're going to we're going to drive it to all these magnificent places. We're going to bring it to make podcasting convenient for huge stars. We've got the mobile studio and for the most part, it just sits at the house and, and we're talking to a computer screen in here. Oh, uh, really? So like the reason I got my van was because of the pandemic, because I needed to kind of get out of the house. So I've been right. But but I've been I've not really been going to talk to anybody. I've just been going and sitting all by myself in the middle of the desert. I know I've been <laughs> uh, I've been enjoying your YouTube channel. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks, man. Thank you. It's been kind of like uh, all right, Charlie. We're not in the best. Yeah, I've been kind of <laughs> like just sort of on a little photo photography, videography kind of journey. You know, right? It's been it's, it's been very peaceful and relaxing. And uh, how long have you been back at home at your house? Uh, just, I've been home for a couple of days, but then I, I, I kind of go back and forth. Like I go, go out for a couple of weeks and then I come back and, uh, you know, take a shower. <laughs> yeah. I know. I just saw on your, your most recent YouTube video, you were talking about, it sounded like bathing and showering exclusively in lakes and rivers. Uh, yeah, well, it's gotten too cold for that now. That's the problem. So now it's just no bathing whatsoever. But it's fine. You know, I'm by myself. I, I don't mind the way I smell. You know, I smell all right to, to myself. I wouldn't want to be with anyone and like smell like the way I smell. But like when I'm by myself, I don't mind, you know? Yeah. Gotta <laughs> say, you look great, dude. I haven't had a haircut in a year, you know? I think I might have to go back to the, uh, the old school, uh, you know, skater look, right? I mean, dude, yeah, I think you look great. You just texted me a photo of you and Tony Hawk, and you called it Skinny Tom, which made yeah. me think that, that you got fat or something, but you're not you fat know at all. I think I did get fat, but then I lost some weight again during the pandemic. So I'm, I'm, I, I think I've, 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 I'm almost Skinny Tom again. Yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and I uh, did so much to talk about, like the, the history that, that we have. There's so many things that... Did do you get bored of being called the the father of podcasting? Yeah. <laughs> remember, remember how much how much crazy sh shit we did up here in this in this room back in the day when we were streaming back in like two thousand and three. Oh my God, do I remember? Yeah, oh, let's hear about it. We used to come up here every time you came up. That's when we really got to know each other. When I started the the Webo Vision up here, yeah, and uh, you would come up and you'd always come bring some crazy stunt or something i remember you know uh you brought a microwave up and we were burning a bunch of shit in the microwave <laughs> there was probably yeah. some other stuff that i don't need to bring up but you know there was a lot of fun was had up here that's for sure there was a lot of <laughs> skateboarding in your living room there was a lot of consumption of alcohol and me with my oh, yeah. with my whippets there was a lot of us rapping together you rapping really well and me rapping terribly <laughs> and uh, there, it, there was just a lot of crazy times, man. It was, and you've always been such a, just such a good friend to me, you know, like supportive and and uh, you know caring when when things were bad, and you know, like forgiving when uh, like when I didn't deserve forgiveness. You know, you've always been a really great guy, Tom, man. Yeah, man. Well, you too, you too. I mean, you know, I think like. You know, when, when we were younger, that was quite a while ago now. That was probably, how many years ago was that? 2003. Quick math, almost 20 years ago, right? right? You know, I mean, I was drinking a lot then too, you know? And yeah. uh, and so we'd come up here, you come up here and we'd do the show. We'd, 
we, I remember one show went five hours and we were like <laughs> drinking and, and right. uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I've cut back quite a bit on the on the booze myself, Steve-O. I, I haven't entirely quit, but uh, I, I'm glad to see you're doing so good and you're so healthy now and everything. It's uh, it's actually inspiring. I'm, I'm thinking maybe I have to uh, take a page out of the Steve-O uh, book to health and happiness and uh, give it up entirely. <clears throat> oh, well, you know, thank you for the kind words. I think that it's... Uh... You know, if, if it's if it's not uh, screwing up your life, then then you know who cares, man. You know, I, I think in general you're you're a a pretty happy guy. You know, I, th- I think of you as a guy who's not like too caught up in all the the rat race and the stress of life. I wish that I could. I, take I, a page. I have my ups and downs for sure. You know, I uh, I think I got a pretty good balance going on, but uh, you know, I mean, I definitely have had 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 low moments in, in, in life and, and where I've, I've definitely been down. And, uh, I think I've, I think I've learned actually a lot in the last 10 years or so that like, you know, booze, you know, whether I haven't entirely quit drinking, but I have cut back to sort of a more sensible amount of drinking. And, um, and I know that when I don't drink at all, I am much happier, which is very counterintuitive because I always used to think, Oh, you know, you drink and it makes you get crazy and it makes you have fun. But but then the next day you feel like shit. And then you compound that with getting older. And that that is even more amplified. I really found when I started doing stand up again, like, you know, that was really where it really kicked in. And I realized, wow, this booze isn't really helping me out too much because, you know, you'd be hung over the next day and you're you're not sharp and you're not like really like feeling positive. So it's interesting. You know, I'm starting to hear a lot of comics and people talking about this where people are like not drinking and i'm thinking geez that just sounds very sort of different than what we sort of grew up hearing about comedians you know people were always, right. always so rock and roll and they were so out there getting you know doing drugs and doing you know i never did drugs but you know uh and boozing it up but now people are getting so straight edge it's it's kind of a nice thing i think yeah, I'll never yeah, forget. Agree. Never forget the first time I, I watched you do stand up, Tom. You you invited me to uh, the oh. Hollywood Improv. It was okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it was 2010. So now uh, 11 years ago, and I remember like just not being sure what to expect, and 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 just being so impressed. I remember thinking, dude, he was on stage for like a whole hour, and he never like forgot what he was supposed to say or anything. You know, like it was. Uh, really cool man and and at that time i had no idea that i would be uh you know sort of following and in, in following your path into stand-up now of course tom's first thing was stand-up like way back before the hidden camera pranks isn't that right yeah sure yeah i mean that's kind of in canada there was a there's a club called yuck yucks in ottawa and uh, it's the comedy club up in ottawa and when i was in high school i'd go down there and kind of discovered stand-up and and uh, loved it. And some of the great stand-ups that I still love, like like Norm MacDonald, for instance, was from Ottawa and he was just starting out there. I remember going to watch him, you know, when I was 15 years old. And it was cool because like it was a bar, but you could still go if you were a teenager. I guess it had its restaurant license or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it felt such like such an adult thing to do. Like you go to the bar and watch comedy in this dark basement and Here's this guy, Norm MacDonald and Jeremy Hotz and all of these guys that came from Ottawa who were at the time in their early 20s and just so crazy, like doing such weird stuff, talking about weird stuff. And it was different than anything you'd see on TV. You know, it was like, you know, Norm MacDonald's, you know, out there. Right. But in 1988, it was like really, really hard to imagine like what you were even seeing, you know, because everything on TV was so straight, you know. Right. So that was really exciting, you know, and um, but it's 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 interesting, you know, now doing stand up now the way you and I have been crossing paths, touring the world, doing shows together in Vegas. And, right. you know, it's like it really is, I think, just sort of uh, I'm just so glad that uh, that we both kind of are doing this now because it's like it really gives you a lot of control over your life now, doesn't it? To be able to just go out and do your thing with your audience. And, uh, 
now travel around in our vans. Man, we really do uh, have very similar lives, <laughs> yeah. don't we, Steve? Yeah, yeah. Come, what's, what's come even... think of it, right? I mean, you, you would think that I was just spending my whole life just, just – Copying Tom Green. <laughs> no, no. What, what's yeah, funny is, I like, mean, Tom Green was uh, the. I mean, dude, he, you were my hero before Jackass was even an idea. The Tom Green show on MTV. I've said this so many times. Like, I literally sat there and and, and recorded every episode of the Tom Green show and was so careful when the commercial break started. I would hit pause on my VCR to, <laughs> to in real time edit out the commercial breaks and then hit record again when the commercial break was over. I had the whole library of the Tom Green show and I just loved it so much, man. I remember when we filmed Jackass for the first time, uh, like I shared a room with our line producer who, who told me that, uh, I was like, what other shows have you done? He said, I worked on the Tom Green show. And all of a sudden I just had this reverence for this, this producer. Was that Trip or? It was, it was Trip. Trip, yeah, Trip yeah, did yeah, the yeah. Tom Green show? Trip did the Tom Green show. And I just thought that was so cool, man. And if you think so, there was the, you know, the, the godfather of the, of the, you know. Podcasting. And then wow, the, the, the podcasting came after, but. Yeah, what do you call that? With that, I mean, hidden camera you can't say the hidden camera because like candid camera had been around for so long but like that man on the street gag that just weird you know like there's yeah. definitely and, and i've always really looked up to people who can make <laughs> footage that's that's compelling and that's that's awesome without like doing anything uh you know, dangerous or, or destructive or, you know, like, or super gross and pu puke everywhere. Like, you yeah, were well, just, we got pretty gross, but yeah. <laughs> yeah pa painting your parents' house plaid or, or, or painting their car. The slut mobile. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's interesting, right? Like, cause we were both skateboarders and I loved skateboarding as a kid. And so, you know, for me, like <laughs> when I was a kid, I would watch like, Palo Peralta videos, you know, yeah. like I was watching, like it was, it was future primitive was the first one that I saw that was like, where I remember seeing video that didn't look like it was made by, you know, NBC or something, you know, right. it was like Stacy Peralta's future primitive. And they were going, you know, they were cruising around New York city and jumping off like the back of, you know, vans and Lance mountain would like wipe out and like, flip around on the ground and shit and everyone was like on the street real people reacting and i was looking at that going like man like that's like raw real like energy that i'd never seen on television before except for maybe maybe a little bit of david letterman was doing stuff like where he'd go out in the street but mm -hmm. everything else was so controlled so so uh you know kind of uh rehearsed and everything so but you know we kind of grew up at that same time where it's like you know all of a sudden we had, we could get a video camera, right? Like we couldn't right. get a video camera before. And, and all of a sudden you could go out and make sort of gorilla gonzo kind of amateur TV, oh, dude. which, you know, maybe it wasn't as perfectly shot or perfectly produced, but the fact that it was so raw and nobody ever like, when people looked at you, when you went up to someone on the street, they didn't think that you were from the TV station because you weren't. And so they'd kind of react real, and it was just the right time, you know, like we just sort of, you know, we were both there at that time when all of a sudden, like everything changed. We started filming stuff, no YouTube, nobody right. watching it, ever seen anything like that before. And sometimes I kind of like feel like, man, like I don't think people today, young people today, I don't think they can kind of quite grasp how crazy it was when, when our shit came on TV back in the early sure. 2000s or 90s, because like nobody had seen it before now, like you can put stuff like that out now and you can do right. stuff like that now, but they're comparing it to all the stuff they see. We're overwhelmed by all this weird video. It doesn't have that impact that it had back Dude, then. I'm, you know? I'm, I'm so fast. There's so much here and I'm so fascinated by it because I think what made it so special was that at that time when you and I started filming our stuff, the video camera was still not yet really a household item you know it was like yeah. pretty you know not not most households had a video camera and it was skateboarders yeah. who were the first to the first to really we had such a leg up in video production skateboarders because our whole 
culture of skateboarding was about trying to get sponsored. So you had to videotape your skateboarding in order to try to get sponsors. And there was never another activity that lent itself to making videos. Like, say, for example, if you were a tennis player, then you want to get sponsored, then, then, you, <laughs> then, then win, you win tournaments. You know, there hey, was, check out my tennis video. You know? Right. Yeah, yeah. There was <laughs> no other part. thing like that. There was no other thing. Like, it was skateboarders that really like first came to the video camera. We got so far ahead of everybody else with the video camera and at a time when it wasn't a household item. And you're absolutely right. Plus, when our stuff came out on MTV, still the average person didn't have a video camera, let alone in their pocket. And the media wasn't so fragmented to where there was like, I mean, sure, there was, there was cable TV and there was network. TV, but when when our stuff came out, there was no such thing as playing videos on the internet. I mean, it was like Webovision at Tom in Tom Green's living room was like really the first streaming video, I think. Right? Yeah, I got I've got so much footage of us. I've got it all on drives and on oh. tapes and stuff. Like. I mean, uh, don't worry. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll I'll let you see it before. I don't. I, I don't. I don't. I don't mind one bit, Tom. I don't mind one bit, and, and, it, and it was it was public. When it got it was pretty recorded. crazy though, man. Like I remember, it was it was like, you know, that was. I mean, that was kind of exciting because, you know, when I was doing the web show here in this room, right? Like this. That's that's where yeah. we were sitting, right there. That you're sitting where the bleachers uh, were. Yeah, I'm right. I'm right where the bleachers were. I had bleachers <laughs> in my living room. <laughs> For what? So amazing. You know, yeah, for the, the in-studio like, audience. We made bleachers, <laughs> and it was just like Steve-O would bring his friends. I'd have my friends, and people would just sort of sit here and watch, and we had a little studio audience, you know? That's great. And, and but, there, there but, was, like, a lot of, like, big-time people in there. Like, uh, we had really great hours and hours in a row with Carson Daly. I remember that fondly. Yeah, Dr. Drew. Yeah. I mean, there were some... some you, had, you had a lot of, uh, of really famous people in there. Yeah, it was... It was weird because like, you know, it felt a little bit like, you know, when I started my show, you know, on public access, we were kind of doing something that was kind of unique, right? Because a video camera was sort of a, you know, shooting with, I didn't actually have a video camera. I had to go pu volunteer at the public access station. So they'd lend me their video camera, you know, nice. I didn't have any money. I had no money. You know, I was like so broke. I was I worked at Dairy Queen. Uh, you know, I'd make a hundred bucks a week. I'd spend it all on a new skateboard deck or, you know, a drum machine or I'd save up for a thing. I'd never had any money for a video camera. Video cameras were like $2,000 or something like that, you know? So, uh, yeah, but like, then when we did the WebOvision, that was like, that was kind of later, you know? It's, it's, it's weird, like, how that seems like a long time ago now, because it doesn't, like, to me, that always feels like, you know, it was like, that was after my show on MTV, but it was, but it's now a long time ago, which is scary because that means like we're really fucking old now. Is that, yeah. is that is what that means? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're pretty old. I remember we uh, we, we were together doing stand up comedy in Scotland. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah when yeah, you yeah. turned forty, it was your fortieth birthday. Was, oh uh, shit! Yeah, that was ten years ago then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. almost. Yeah. So, so yeah, that, that was cool. The Edinburgh <laughs> Festival. Dude, you guys have a, a lot in common. Your moms went to the same high school. Oh, that's right. That's why, that, like, it's such a Dude, small I world. Yeah, yeah, our wow. moms went to the same high school in Barrie, Ontario. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, my my mom said to say hi. I was talking to my mom this morning. She 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 knew your mom and uh, she knew my mom. Was, I know. How would you guys find that out, dude? I, I'm not, I'm not even sure. But dude, did I ever tell you the joke that I would? So do? my mom told me. That's how we figured it out. Yeah. My mom called me up one day, you know, and 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 uh, you know, after Jackass came out, and uh, and she said, "Oh, you know what's so strange? You know, Steve O from Jackass. I was friends with his mom. Isn't that a small world? You know, <laughs> that's how my mom talked. And uh, and so yeah, like uh, she was like, they were friends. They were like, they were good friends. Like they right. knew each other. I think your mom was one grade below my mom, but they all like." hung out knew each other so that's great yeah. man that's cool that, that's great i like what so it, it's been something when i'm doing stand-up in canada i would say like you know wow like I, I'm, I'm actually canadian and and it's a, a, completely true that my my most prized possession is my canadian passport 
I really think because like there's going to be a time when being having the ability to go over into Canada is going to be something really, really of value. So I don't yeah, say that. That, that could be the time right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Might have been six months ago. Right. Just about. Yeah, yeah. But I would yeah, do this yeah. just when in, I would say in Canada, you know, like my, I'm, I'm Canadian because my mom was born in Canada. And then I'd say my mom actually went to high school with Tom Green's mom. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, I think it was Barry yeah. North Collegiate, I think, is yeah. what it was. Yeah. And yeah. then I'd yeah. say, and then I'd say, uh, but my mom was a way bigger slut. <laughs> why, why would you say that? Yeah. <laughs> Just because it's a ridiculous thing. Of course, I'm kidding. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think that yeah. if it came down to it, it would probably be true. But I don't know. It's not my business. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Just funny. That, you know, I mean, how do you come up with that joke? Like, oh, my parents went to school together, but like, my mom was probably a whore. Like. <laughs> Why would you like? How would you make those connections? I, I don't know. I mean, you just think you think of like. I think it's funny because if you imagine Tom Green's mom, and then you imagine Steve O's mom, like uh, okay. the idea, of, like Steve O's mom would probably have been a bigger slut. But like, who knows? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I'll, I'll ask my mom about that. I know. She, she might... <laughs> for uh for you tom like when jackass first came out did you feel like oh these are my allies this is like a progression of what i'm doing or did it feel like they were sort of taking what you did for the record as inspired by tom green as i was i don't think that i ever tried to copy him but we'll see what he says and speaking of records boy did i set one on my whoop app when I went on that crazy 86.9 bicycle ride down to San Clemente. Yep. And what's so cool about the Whoop app is that when I kick butt like that, it's not just the Whoop app that knows about it. It's my bros, too, because we're all in a group together. And some days, you know what? I lose. Some days I win. But we're always motivating each other to stay fit and healthy and get rest and it's just awesome man. it's such a cool thing to be a part of and it's time for you to try it so this is how you do it you go to whoop.com that's w-h-o-o-p dot com and this is how you're going to get set up with the most insightful technologically advanced fitness tracking system there is okay so whoop.com you're going to use the promo code Stevo, and that's going to get you 15% off at checkout. And do it, because you're going to know more about what's going on with your body than you ever have before, and so will your bros. So, one last time, whoop.com, use the promo code Stevo, and see if you can burn 4,324 calories in a single day, because I did, and my bros know it. <laughs> yeah, dude. All right. I remember I went to like a screening of it. I at, remember uh, seeing you there. I was like, no way, off. that's Tom Green. But that was for the movie, not the series. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, no, I mean, I remember it was, I think I was in New York when it first came out. And I was kind of like, yeah, I thought it was amazing. Like, it was definitely different. I didn't think it was the same thing because you guys were kind of more like physical, more skateboard oriented too. Like my show, like, because I, I was a skateboarder, but. I always kind of we. Were, I was trying to do more like a David Letterman type show, you know, which yeah. and you guys were definitely doing more of the the physical stunts and stuff, which I uh, was sometimes kind of I was shocked, you know, like uh, that. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know, like do, I don't know if we really met each other right away. I don't think. I don't I, think. I, think I remember. Was, I remember kind of walking by each other at that screening, and I was just sort of, in, you know really thrilled to, to to see you like to be in tom green's presence was something pretty special for me and it's uh, a weird thing because it's like i had only been really living in you know the united states for a few years at that point and i don't i i've, I've real i've i've learned something about myself over the years which is i i think i had like a lot of social anxiety when i was like younger like i got really nervous meeting people and stuff so I didn't really ever know like what to say, like when I was around like you guys or, you know, you know, like when we were talking about Tony Hawk, you know, like how yeah. we get to skate with Tony Hawk now. And someone just sent me some pictures of me and Tony skating back in 1999. And I posted them on my Instagram today, but it took me back to those years where I was like, 
you know, I was just sort of overwhelmed and intimidated by people, you know? So I was always, I think it was sometimes like, I was kind of like, you know, people misunderstood it as like, Oh, is this guy like not want to talk to me? But really I was just kind of scared shitless. Like whenever I would run into somebody that I kind of was amazed by, you know, and I just sort of sit there in silence, you know, mm. but um, I don't know. Did you find that or were you just not, not like, uh, not, I don't think that it was really a situation where we were introduced or had a, a, a big conversation. So I, I, I didn't have any, uh, you know, like yeah. I didn't find you standoffish or anything. I just found you standing over there ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't really. We didn't really kind of get to know each other probably until we did the web show like a right. few years later. You know, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, did you? But have... like, um, I kind of like worry about you guys a lot. Like, yeah. not so much now, but like, because, like, like you guys like actually really get hurt like right. badly, right? Like, yeah. like. I, I never really did the jumping off things or, right. you know, and so I kind of like, I'm somewhat amazed that like, um, that you guys are able to do some of that stuff and not actually permanently get hurt. Like doesn't Johnny Knoxville actually really kind of hurt himself pretty badly. Right. Uh, a number of times. And I think that uh, <laughs> it, it would be good for him to be very careful with his brain from this point forward. I think that he's yeah, uh, like concussions and stuff. I like think that, he's right? used up all of his free concussions. That's, so when that's you guys are like doing say. stuff now, like you're doing, you're doing another movie now, right? We've been shooting another movie. Yeah. So is it going to be like as physical? Like, are you going to do as yeah. much sort of painful <laughs> stuff? Like when you're, when you're jumping off things? And... Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's right, Tom. <laughs> yeah. It's so, been, uh... and, and so like, like, uh, is there any sort of, there, there must be some, I'm going to kind of interview you now for a second, but Go for it. there, there must be some like pressure to one up the, yeah. uh, the last big yeah. stunt. And, uh, you know, some things are kind of maybe not one upable, right? Like, I mean, like, are you concerned that maybe you're going to push it too far? You know, there is that concern. And, um, <laughs> and then, like, if, if, um, if there was something you could imagine, like not ever wanting to one up, like the, in my mind, for the particularly for Knoxville, like one thing where you think, oh, please don't try to one up that. And then. Yeah. He totally one up to that. <laughs> Two upped it. <laughs> wow, no, he one and a half did. <laughs> yeah, specifically oh, okay. he won and one and a half. Like, uh, like uh, yeah, well, just don't, don't, uh, you know, don't, um, you know, overdo it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> be careful. Yeah, right. Maybe be, be careful while you're not being careful. Right? right. I mean, we're we're pretty close to uh, having gotten away with it, so I don't want to say anything more. But then there's yeah. more, there's more to do, but, but the, the majority of it is in the can. I probably shouldn't even say that, but I did. So far um, so good. Right. And, and now I'm going to go back to, I want to, this isn't even a question. It's, it's a comment, but Tom, I got to say, I think that you're, if not the most, certainly one of the most talented people I know, you know, like with the, <laughs> with, with, with your, well, I mean, him, a pioneer too and like so much fucking talent with the the rapping and and with the comedy and and inventing planking <laughs> <laughs> you invented planking yeah well planking I became a thing what do you mean I didn't, I didn't i didn't call it planking but one of the early bits on my show i would go and i would just lie down on my face until people came and called an ambulance right, right? <laughs> and you know and then, you know, years later, everyone was lying down on their face and, and I was credited with that. But nice. uh, but we didn't really call it planking. But but yeah, you know, I mean, you know, this, it's it's like we, we kind of like, uh, you know, what I find interesting about the world today is everybody's kind of doing what we did back when we were younger. You right. know, so many people like people are kind of able to go out and kind of create their own thing and do their own thing. And and uh, that was sort of so much sort of more of an obscure idea back in the day where you could actually just go make your own, your own content as they call right. it content. So, um, I, no, would, but, I mean, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's sort of weird to think that uh, we're still doing this shit, you know, at this right. stage. It's certainly, you know, I, I sometimes kind of, kind of find it amazing because, you know, I'm, I'm turning 50 this year and, uh, 
you know, I'm trying to do different things now, but it's still kind of all rooted in the same thing. You know, I'm really enjoying the, the video. I'm do, enjoying doing photography. I've got, the, you know, my new cameras, my drone. I'm going out there shooting yeah. all these rad shots, you know. Is your birthday and, uh, in August? What's that? Is your birthday in August? July 30th. Oh, yeah, July yeah, 30th. Basically. So pretty close. Pretty close to yeah, August. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, now, here's a question that I get really fascinated by. And, and, and it's, it's, it's a question that only applies really to us. But if you and I were born 20 years later, yeah. so that when we first started making videos, there was a YouTube. Yeah, maybe, yeah. You know, like, w would we have a... We'd both be working at Dairy Queen right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I a little bit think, you know, I think you can only really interpret that question. But for me... Um, I think that it would be a problem because there is so much content out there. Just anybody can just click of a button and put, put up a video. Like it was, uh, there's a lot more noise to have to rise above in, in, in this day and age. And I think also that with the algorithms and, and this and that, like it's about quantity of footage more than quality of footage you know it's like these these uh, vloggers the most successful youtubers they're successful because they're putting up videos every single day so it's not yeah. it's not about like i always shot like just little tiny snippets of something that was like super intense but like i never had a very long video to put out you know like i, I think i would have suffered I think that I, I personally benefited a great deal by being born when I was born. Yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely timing is important for everything. And then also, I think, like, maybe we'd just be doing something completely different because it's also just about, like, kind of thinking different, you know? So, like, because everyone's doing that now, maybe we would have, maybe we'd be, like, into computers or something. You know, right. maybe we'd be making, you know, we'd probably be, like, you know, cryptocurrency guys or something you know yeah, yeah, i don't right. know man I, i'm too much of an sell, attention sell. whore i'm such an attention whore I, I can't imagine doing anything but seeking attention right right yeah well yeah, i think what's interesting like had you guys been born 20 years later would there be a youtube like kind of what what you guys did oh, and what skateboarding shit. did and what bam did like led to that in in a lot of ways. So yeah. you're saying we sort of ruined everything. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No, I mean, you just, you, you changed the game. But I mean, the amount of work you guys went through to edit a video back then, like, it's just so different now. It takes, you know, everybody can edit a video on their phone, but like, you guys were putting in work. I mean, weren't you like recording VCRs and having two TVs and putting them together oh, and yeah. stuff like that? Yeah. When sure. you When you guys were first filming stuff, was it the big like over the shoulder camera or had cameras gotten small and like handheld by that and, time? I don't know, Tom, did you use a full size VHS or were you on the VHS C tip? So we had a, a few different cameras in the early days. So we'd go down to the station that I volunteered at. And I also, I went to broadcasting school. So we had high eight cameras we had, uh, which sucked. And uh, we had, uh, cause you know, you'd get all the dropouts on the tape, you know? Uh, but uh, then there was an SVHS camera we shot a lot, which Ooh. was pretty good. It was the S S V H S. Wow. Right? That's, that's better than just a, a straight up VHS. It was like S V H S. Right. Um, and then, uh, and then we had, you know, then Mini DV came along later and stuff. So yeah, a few, few, few big cameras. Mini DV felt like pretty exciting, you know, because right. it was digital, smaller, compact, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, I remember making the jump from uh, high eight to digital at first. Oh, yeah. And then I jumped mm -hmm. back. Now, here's a question, Tom. Um, I remember you coming out with your own beer. Is that something that yeah. people can still buy? Yeah, it's, in, it's, it's only in Canada there, right? Eh? But yes, you can get it. It's called the Tom Green Beer. You can't buy it and online uh, in America and have it shipped to America? I, I don't think they're allowed to ship it across the border, but. Uh, it might it might be available in New York State. It was for a while, but it's really I might have to go take a trip to Canada when they open the border up to drink my beer. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe one of these days I'll get it down in the U.S., but not here yet. So yeah. Now I also remember you being a pro skateboarder for Birdhouse. Yeah, yeah. I've got, I I I was Tony sort of made me. I'd say it an honorary member, an mm. honorary member of the team. You know, <laughs> which was fun. Went on tour. Uh, remember we went on tour with Bam once. Uh, we did a sort of a 
cross-country demos where we drove around in these Lexus cars that they gave us. And uh, Jeremy Klein and uh, Bam and Tony and uh, uh, the whole team, you know, Brian Sumner, Willie Santos, um, you know, Bucky Lassick. Was Andrew Reynolds us. on? Uh, I don't think he was. No, he wasn't on Birdhouse then. This was sort of after I think he right, left okay. and done another thing. But uh, but that was that was kind of like to me was sort of like sort of a uh, a dream, a dream true. come true in a way where I couldn't even really believe that I had like my own you know pro model board. You know, right. and and it was and Jeremy Klein, you know, did all the graphics. You know, uh, actually, and uh, Sean Cliver actually drew it. Yep. So Sean Kleiber, Jackass uh, uh, family, drew my graphic, and then Jeremy Klein kind of designed it. And so it was like a real skate graphic, you know? Like it really right. was the old school type, type design graphic. So that was pretty sweet, you know? I mean, I, I was obviously like kind of like, I had a few tricks I like to do. I was definitely love skateboarding. Like I have a love for skateboarding. When I was a kid, like, you know, in Ottawa, you know, I wasn't even really like there was a lot of skaters in Ottawa that were pretty good. I was pretty good, but, you know, I mean, I wasn't really like uh, like like, you know, doing the kind of stuff that you're you can do. And, you know, I could do some things I could do. Like I, I like to power slide a lot. Yeah. I like I to mean, do bonelesses. I like to do like I used to I used to be I used to have a, a nice launch ramp at my house when I was a kid. And I, I, I used to be able to do like 360 airs, early grab 360 yeah. airs, but I never really got it on video, which is kind of like something that I'm because we didn't have a video camera. And I probably really only landed one super clean, like maybe like five times, you know, yeah. and that to me probably is like my biggest regret in my life. That yeah. opening <laughs> sequence of Freddie Got Fingered. Yeah, I was thinking it, was about a, that. it was a skateboarding sequence where you're mm -hmm. going through the mall in the opening sequence, yeah. and it was really well shot. It was super, super badass, man. So that was kind of like, so for me, like the first time I ever saw skateboarding in a real movie was when Back to the Future came yeah. out. Yeah, that's and when so I started skating. That's why I wanted to put this opening scene, I wanted to have skating and Freddie Got Finger, because now I got an opportunity to make a movie, and I wanted the opening scene to be me, like me skating somewhere and going somewhere. And, what I loved about Back to the Future was like, like how that shaped my life was weird because, you know, that was like, I, I loved skateboarding and I had a skateboard, but I didn't, they didn't have like the big boards yet. You know, they were, it was, right. it was the banana boards, right? Right. And then Back to the Future came out and it was like a different kind of board, you know, it's like, it was when that sort of the eighties started and the yep. fluorescent sort of splatter paint and the big wheels and the. And, the, and, and, and I saw that board. I thought, what, what is that board? That is a crazy looking board. And then all of a sudden those boards started coming out. And, the, and it was like the fact that he would skate to school. In Holding that, onto the truck was so cool. Hold, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he had a backpack on and Huey Lewis and the news <laughs> was playing. And so like for some reason, like when I was in like the ninth grade, I thought like, I got to listen to Huey Lewis and the news, right? Because like, <laughs> like, that's like power of skateboarding love music, you know? Yeah. I so do. I'd like, I'd put on my Sony Walkman. I'd pop in my Huey Lewis and the news sports cassette. And I'd listen to the heart of rock and roll. And I'd replicate the, t the, the Michael J. Fox skateboarding the school scene every day going to school for my entire high school uh, career. <laughs> and it always felt like the coolest thing because like back then, like, skateboarding wasn't cool like when i was in high school like i was like one of maybe two guys in my school that actually skateboarded and all the other kids in school were kind of like you know we're trying to be cool now right we're we're we're, we're listening to the eagles and we're wearing like you know penny loafers and we're wearing like you know polo and i'd be showing up with like skulls on my pants and my hair was like you know like yeah. crazy down to here because and uh, tony hawk and, had like, it that uh, way and 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 I had my skateboard and people would kind of look at you like, why are you on a skateboard, man? You're in high school. You're an adult now. What are you, an idiot? And right. I'd be like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Skateboarding wasn't cool when we were kids, man. When you Yeah. Know. Yeah. So, so so now let's talk about your rapping, because I've always been so impressed by by TG the rapper. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. you guys are oh, both yeah. rappers. 
We're both rappers. We're both skaters. We're, we're both we're podcasters. Up. We're both van lifers. We're both we're, we're. pranksters. <laughs> MTV. Yeah, yeah, man. Crazy. It's it's MTV it, alumni. It, it, really, it really is crazy. Um, yeah. I mean, ta- what was first the the um, uh, what was it the stand up or rap? Well, the the. the, the, the Public access is what I'm looking for. The the TV public access. Uh, TV the rapping show. was kind of first. I'm just gonna let Charlie outside wants yeah. to go for a potty. Uh, the rapping was kind of before the public access. Yeah, I was like, um, I was like, uh, here. By the way, this is where the this is where the studio used to be. Yeah, this is where oh, we epic. would sit. This, this is where we would sit. That is exactly right. Show. Um, but uh, the. Uh, the rapping, I was like, started doing that in high school when I was like 16. And um, yeah, it was, it was kind of like, it's kind of what actually made me realize that like technology was what was kind of uh, the thing that you had to pay attention to. Because like when rapping came out in the 80s, like when rap music became popular in the 80s, like it was like drum machines were new, you know, and right. it was like electronic music was new. And uh, I remember saving up all all summer, working my my job at Dairy Queen, so I could buy this used Yamaha drum machine when I was like seventeen or sixteen years old. And I I basically started making these beats with an Atari computer hooked up to this drum machine. And we go down to my high school and we do these like we play at the Christmas concert. And my buddy Greg, who was in the group, who called Organized Rhyme, or videos on YouTube, and we we started like doing these songs and then we started opening up for all the punk bands when they come to come to ottawa you know we hooked up with the promoter and we were the only rap group in ottawa so we'd go down and open for these punk bands these canadian punk bands different like bands. Day Glow abortions no like we would open for like a lot of local bands that were from ottawa you know and then you know i'm trying to think of you know like snfu we never actually opened for them no i, I think we might have seen them but it was more like there was just there's what groups were we open for? We were open for like these Canadian groups. And uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the, the bands we opened for a lot of local stuff. And uh, you know, like they were like local bands, like the illegal jazz poets. And uh, we opened for the bare wow. naked ladies once, not a punk band, but uh, nice. um, boot sauce was this Canadian rock band. We opened for a bunch of times and uh, which is hilarious, by the way, check that out. But um but then we sort of started doing that and uh, we got a record deal and that was kind of like, wow, you know, like we actually got a record deal after doing this for about four years. And, and, uh, and it was kind of, it was kind of neat, you know, it's kind of neat that we were able to pull that off. As How teenagers. many rappers were there in the group? One other one. Yeah. Greg, Greg, Greg Campbell was the other guy. And nice. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Like when we were like, when we were teenagers, we went down to New York city and we recorded a demo. We had someone bring us down there to record a demo. And I remember thinking, at that early age, like sort of putting it all together, like, Oh, you know, like you work hard with like, you know, you, you get a drum machine and you, you, you make some songs and then you can maybe try to like get into show business or something right? like that. You know, that's Paul's catchphrase is make stuff till you make it, make shit till you yeah. make it. Yeah. Yeah. And it all just was that just doing it ourselves kind of thing, you know, which was kind of, it was kind of exciting, you know? So how about what are you doing, Char- Look at Charlie. What are you doing, Charlie? What are you doing? This is the best dog, by the way. It's like, wow. I mean, I mean, I know you got the best dog too, but this dog is so funny. <laughs> yeah, you're Charlie. You're a crazy. So, girl. she's like a really style. good dog. She's a, a rescue from. Look at this. Look at this thing. Look at her. Hello, oh, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. She just Hello, perked Charlie. up there. Hello, Charlie. Look at you. Look at you. Hello, Charlie. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, 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 Love it, man. So you're a prolific freestyler too. Like how legit is freestyling? You just come up with something out of nowhere. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think, I think a lot of times freestyling is, is defined in different ways. Like sometimes it's, it's not necessarily always off the top. Like every word is off the top sometimes it's some people refer to freestyling as total off the top but then sometimes it's just more like rapping over a beat could be pre-written lyrics and stuff like 
you know, like when I, I, there's that video online where I'm rapping with exhibit and everyone says I'm freestyling. It's, it's not like those were some lyrics that I'd written, you know, yeah. there were lyrics that were in my head memorized. Right. But it was over a different beat and it was kind of throwing it down in the, in the, in the moment. So I, I, I have a hard time really freestyling, freestyling where you're totally making it up. To be honest with you, I kind of sometimes question whether or not, not that even is a real thing. You know, I think people have a lot of written verses, a lot of lyrics right. in their heads because, uh, you know, you, you want to have some sort of payoff. You want to have some sort of a punchline. Right. And if, if you just kind of start going off the top, it might just be a bunch of garbage coming out of your mouth, you know, unless you're. I mean, I've seen some that are pretty incredible. Yeah, I think my favorite one is Juice World, who did like four hour long freestyle on yeah, some radio say. show mm -hmm. once. And you're kind of going like, damn, that's that's pretty impressive. <laughs> right. And I've seen other ones where the audience will make suggestions of what the subject matter should right. be. And then they yeah. just put it together and it's like, OK, well, that looks pretty yeah. legit. I've seen a guy on YouTube doing that and it is pretty, really impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've but, got, uh, I look back on my rap chapter of my life, trying to become a rapper as like arguably the most humiliating, just most terrible <laughs> part of my life. But all, uh, <laughs> all of these years well, later, all of these years later, I can't help but feel compelled to try to redeem myself. I, I, I feel like I want to make a, a rap redemption track you know? yeah like, yeah yeah and well you know that's one of the things that like i'm like still love doing is making beats like uh, i've got a little just little drums uh drum machine and set up in my in my van ah, so man. i'll send you some beats man and and uh you know throw some shit on that and send it back and we'll we'll mix it up and we'll put that shit out <laughs> dude i love it and and, and uh as we we were you know it's just sort of brainstorming oh well, what would my rap song be about it's very interesting to me that the one topic that we really set settled on would be a, a rap song about van life right how about yeah. that huh that'd be you good know, let's do like, it That's, that'd be great just, you guys should meet out in the desert and fucking yeah i would love to go on like a little uh little van trip with you i think yeah, we, we let's, can, do we, let's, do, let's do it for sure man like i uh we can make some great so I, youtube yeah videos. i mean I'm, I'm basically like uh doing this all the time now like i'm gonna start touring with my van and, and i'm gonna stop I'm, I'm, you know just this whole year has changed my whole perspective on things like i don't really want to uh you know take airplanes as much anymore and stuff. does that mean so, that you're gonna so route gonna start, your touring like, are you gonna, gonna route start, my touring are you gonna specifically gonna go in my van and yeah man that's yeah. that's tricky dude that's tricky yeah i yeah, did so I, that's kind of what i want to do but I but i mean like uh yeah like let's let's uh what kind of van do you have, by the way? It's a, a Ram Promaster. Oh, okay, I believe, cool, I cool. Yeah, yeah. The same. And so, like, I'm trying to picture like how you've got it set up right now because that's pretty dope. Like, yeah, we're in the back. This is the rear lounge, and the the rear lounge is it converts into a, a bed area. But above, oh, okay. above me is a second bed, which lowers down from the ceiling. Whoa. Okay. It's so it's really, set up totally differently than the way mine's set up. Yeah. Yeah. I, yours is I, more I, of a. Yeah, it seems like you got like a lot more space the way you're doing it. I just I kind of have like my bed and right. uh, you know. Yeah, uh, dude, but, I got uh, a I got to shout out the people who make this. It's uh, the it's been converted by Regency RV. And I, oh, nice, nice. Yeah, that's cool. I yeah, I, uh, I got mine with this company called Boho, and they do, like, really cool shit, oh, too. Oh, tell me about yeah, the, the, the Battle Batter, Battleborn Batteries. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I got used Battleborn Batteries and Boho. They, these guys went on Shark Tank, and they make vans out of, in Phoenix, and uh, and they're really cool. And, uh, yeah, it's I mean, it's amazing, man. I, I love it. I, and I, I love the battery. The whole battery thing is, like, you want to talk about, like, what is kind of new and exciting about about the van for me it's like it's like what you're doing like the fact that we can go anywhere and right. and have power you know remember you used to go want to go film stuff and at the end of the day you'd have to go to a hotel and charge your camera batteries and all that stuff up right so it's pretty cool you yeah. know what you know what else i've been doing in here i've been using this as a, a tattoo parlor okay i've become <laughs> a tattoo artist as well oh, okay do okay you, do you have any tattoos I, I have no tattoos. Do you I have no one? tattoos. No, I can't. I'll never give somebody their first tattoo, man. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I, it's I like giving someone one. their first cigarette. Um, I won't do it. I thought about maybe getting one, you know. I thought like maybe like maybe that would but 
would that maybe constitute like if I got my first tattoo at 50, is that sort of like a <laughs> midlife crisis? Yeah. It's better I, than a Harley. I, I think it's cool that you don't have any tattoos and, uh, yeah. you know, and, and Tom, I just, I love you as a friend. I, I, I just admire you as an artist. I, I clearly just follow in your footsteps. Like, <laughs> like, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, a fucking like I'm sucking your dick for decades. I just okay, love it. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, okay, thank you. <laughs> and uh, you know, and I'm just really grateful that we got to do this. If if you ever, if you're ever in the desert and you think, you know, if today for today's you know van life podcast, I'd like to zoom somebody in. I'd I'd love to do that. I'd oh love, yeah, no, for sure. Let's I'd do that for sure. I'd love and to go on a mission like- with you. Write some let's get lyrics. This fucking stupid pandemic, and then let's go link up and uh, do that van life rap song. In, uh, van life in rap the- song, yeah, you know, like yeah. just hitting the road with the bros. Yeah. <laughs> you got any lyrics yeah. for the van life? <laughs> I don't have any lyrics. Just shitting yet. in the bushes. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a toilet in your van? You know, I do. I do. But um, do you, you poop know, in it? I'm going to like a. I'm. I'm sort of like very remote a lot of the time so like i'm out in the middle of the wilderness so i'm also have like just pure camping style of uh yeah. of bathroom facilities as well like behind the tree kind of thing mm-hmm. mine is uh is is two-wheel drive not four-wheel drive and that's my big my, my one thing about my van i wish it was four-wheel drive yeah i mean i mine's also two-wheel drive you're better um, off like it's the front wheel drive right so that's, yeah. that's pretty good like that's pretty good um I think, I, you know, was, I, I, uh, I got stuck once on my first day out, my very first night out, I got stuck in the desert, in the Mojave Desert. But uh, I've kind of learned, like, just sort of to avoid that soft sand. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. And um, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, you're better off with front wheel drive than with real rear wheel drive. Yeah. And and, uh, you know, I think I think it's, it's pretty good. I, the, the truck's pretty good in the in the in the dirt roads and stuff, you know. Yeah, well, we'll see how it goes. And man, I can't wait to link up with you in person, Tom. I just love you as a person. Yeah, thanks, man. I love you too, Steve. Oh, thank and, you, man. Before, and, we, uh, let any, before and, we let everybody go, they, if they're not already subscribed to your YouTube channel, then yeah, yeah, yeah. that's very important. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com slash Tom Green. And, yeah, uh, and there's also and a then, podcast to subscribe to, which is separate, even though there's some overlap. Yeah, so I'm changing my name on my podcast again back to it's called the Tom Green Podcast now. So Good. subscribe to that one. <laughs> right. Okay. But, but so, so the Tom Green Podcast, you can subscribe to that anywhere and uh, the YouTube channel and then all the social media. And then, of sure. course, there's the Tom Green on Instagram. With, yeah, uh, on the Instagram, the, the, the I'm pictures on the gram. With Tony Hawk, yeah. I'm on all the, I'm on all the spots. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I, I enjoy your tweets too. <laughs> Sometimes, like, you've got real. Uh, socially conscious things that the, when I, when I, I think about it, I think, Hmm, Tom's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You man. know, there's, there's so much social media now. I would say that right now that the YouTube channel is the thing that I'm most passionate about because I just love like the fact that we can make things that are almost cinematic and highly and quality now, you know? Yep. And, uh, you know, Instagram's cool and, uh, I, but I've started putting less video on Instagram and just sort of more putting it all on my YouTube channel. I, I kind of find that's the most exciting thing. So. I've been enjoying it. And you've got a great amount of viewership on there, dude. With regular posting, people are following you on your van life adventures, and, and it's a lot of fun to watch. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, man. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you in person, and we'll go uh, have to go do some goofy shit. Yeah, likewise, man. I say keep growing the hair, dude. Yeah, that's good. I, yeah, I'd say I say just keep it keep it coming. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm <laughs> actually enjoying it. I uh, I feel a little bit less, uh, a little more relaxed. You know. Yeah. I think part of it is just like being out in the desert a lot, and uh, this year has been very strange, of course, for all of us. Um, and and uh, I've 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 tried to find a way to kind of, you know cope and adapt with with the scariness of this year yeah. uh, by just um you know doing what i sort of always loved which is just getting out into nature you know and and uh and and, and chilling out a little bit and i think i'm gonna i think for me personally i don't know about how, how you feel but like for me personally like i feel like coming out of this thing i, I feel like it's going to have changed me a lot as a person you know i feel like i'm going to be a little bit more 
you know, less stressed out now. I think I mm. just, I, 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 I think I was, I think I was like taking things a little too seriously before this pandemic. And now it's kind of like you realize, Oh wait, like the entire world can end instantly. Well, maybe we should probably just relax a little bit. Right? I like that. I like that. Yeah. I can't say the same for myself. I'm not, I'm no less stressed out. If anything, I'm more stressed out because when the pandemic came, I, I, uh, I found myself adapting. I wasn't just on the road touring. So I started with the podcast and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. So now there's like, I feel like more balls in the air and I'm juggling more activities and I'm like enjoying it a lot. But, but if anything, it's in, increased the pressure that I put on myself to keep achieving and, 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 you know, being productive and, uh, and it, I, I, I could stand to like, just take a breath. You're grabbing your heart a lot. Are you, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, are you all right? Yeah. I, could, I could stand to take a breath and relax more like you, Tom. <laughs> Grow your hair out like that. Dude. Yeah. yeah, there you yeah. go. We got to get the dogs together too. I man. know. Yeah. Charlie loves doggies. Like, and she, yeah. I, 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 you know, she, like Wendy and Charlie, Tom, you know, they're, they're, they're destined to be very good friends, but Wendy's a much bigger slut. <laughs> <laughs> How dare awesome, you man. talk to Wendy like that? <laughs> hey, I love you, Tom, man. Looking forward to, to catching up with you, man. All right, Steve-O, love you, man. Awesome. Congrats on everything, and I'll see you soon, okay? For sure. All right, see you guys. Later, nice dude. Talking, Bye, man. Tom. So there you have it, folks. Just a great guy and a legend of comedy on top of being a personal hero of mine. And I know that if you go over to his YouTube channel or his Instagram, or if you leave a comment to say, hey, man, uh, I came here from the Steve-O podcast, and yeah, I enjoyed it. Like, Tom really, uh, that would mean a lot to him. I know that. So head on over there, man, and, and just let him know you appreciate him because... I sure do. And that's it for me today. Thanks so much, guys. I love you.